Now, it's hard to talk about the conventional swing. So many people compare our golf swing to conventional, but it's really hard to talk about the conventional swing because what is conventional out there? If you actually look at the PGA Tour and look at the wide variety of golf swings and the mechanics going on on the PGA Tour, it's hard to define what conventional is. So I've kind of done that with, with you tonight. I put together a video which talks about a number of players' swings, which many people call modern golf swings. So we're going to look at the conventional golf swing, and then we're going to look at the single plane swing and how it compares. And, and, and then we're going to take a look at what I consider the single plane golf swing and its simplicity. Remember, we're going to play this video that I produced here for you, but when you watch this video, keep this in mind that this whole idea of conventional versus single plane is really not about comparing different methodologies. The goal is to simplify ball striking. It's to simplify the golf swing. The single plane swing does that. So what you're going to see in this video, some of you are maybe brand new to seeing this for the first time. We're not trying to be a different method. We're trying to simplify the game of golf by simplifying the mechanics of the golf swing. So you're going to see these players, these tour players on the golf swing, they got some good things in their swing and they got some complicated things in their swing. So let's, gonna, let's go to that video. Remember, this is about simplicity of getting to impact and the simplicity of the single plane. Now, a lot of people talk about the conventional golf swing, and there's so many different variations of what people consider as conventional or traditional. So I wanted to go through a, a variety of swings on the PGA Tour, what, we, what many people consider the conventional golf swing. And here's Charlie Wee that I you just see on the screen right here. And Charlie, I would regard as a traditional or modern conventional golf swing player. And he's been known for the stack and tilt method. So this, I thought this would be a good place to start as far as an example of what the conventional golf world teaches. Now, I'm going to go through the way we look at the conventional swing. And then we'll, we'll do it. I'll show you the comparison of this versus what we call a pure single plane golf swing. Now, if you look at I'm going to draw a couple lines here just to do some analysis here. I'll draw a red line on the club shaft. That's where he is planing this golf club at address. So there is swing plane at address. And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to go right to the most important part of the swing, and I'm going to go to impact. And you can see right here at impact that he's, the club shaft is lifted. You see how it's, it's above the red line, see the yellow line? It's lifted to a higher plane. So you can see that he's had to go from red, the red plane of the club to the yellow plane of the club. Now I want you to notice some things about this impact position. This is, a, this is the most important place in a golf swing, and all good players get to an impact position where the club shaft is on this impact plane that goes through what I call mid-back, mid-spine. You see how it's going through about the middle of his back right there. Okay, so that's, this is very conventional. This is, this is a typical golf swing on the tour. He starts on the lower plane there with, with the red line. He takes the club back, and you can see you're going to see a lot of different variations in how this club is back. You can see the club isn't isn't parallel to either line there. He comes back, he makes a move down. Now you'll see the club go right down to the yellow line to impact plane. Now here's what I want you to notice about if you go from the red line to the yellow line, and this is what all these guys do. They go from low plane to high plane. You're going to see this foot lift off the ground. Why? Now why are you seeing this foot lift? The problem with seeing this foot lift, number of things, you have to have a, a pretty large rotation in the body here because of the foot lifting. You can see it's quite a bit of rotation in his hips, and you see a lifting of the foot. Now, what's the problem with that? And I'm going to tell you right now that it's right here in the lower back because you have this part of the body going up, and in the downswing, you got this part of the body going down. So you got the upper body going down and the lower body going up. And see, you can see it right there. Watch, watch this area of his, of his body. I'm going to erase these lines. Watch this area of his body right here as I go in slow motion. You're going to see it turn and now lift up into the air upward. And now it's even going a little bit backwards. You can see he's even leaning back. So you talk about tension in this part of the back. And it's and why? Now, why did this occur? And you've got to understand this. This is what I want you to know about conventional golf. Why did this occur? And it occurred right here. Right here at this address position from hanging the arms straight down below the shoulder. See, this is what they teach. Athletic position, hang the arms straight down. Put the club too low. 
He, what happens is the club's too low, his hands are too low, and he's too close to the ball. So what he has to do is he has to get out of the way and lift up and back. And now he can be on this higher plane because of the natural forces of the club lifting him to the higher plane. But he's had to go back and up and put stress right here on the back. It's a very complicated thing to do. Now, that's Charlie Wee. Let's fast forward here and let's go look at another player. And what I, who I want to look at here Let's see. Let's find Lee Westwood. This is a great example of another way to get the job done. Look, these guys are great players. There's nothing to be said about how they play the game of golf. I'm talking strictly biomechanics here. Let's talk look let's look at this. Athletic position. I'd say he's people know him as a pretty conventional golfer. Arms pretty much hanging straight down below his shoulders. Watch this though. I'm going to draw a yellow line on the shaft. There's the club shaft plane at address. We've seen that before with Charlie Wee. Now let's take him into his backswing. And let's bring him to impact and watch this. Look at the club shaft plane here. Once again, not a surprise. The club is lifted. Where is it going? Right through the middle of his back. Right through the middle of his back. See that? Now, he's different. Why? Remember. Just remember this. Watch this. This is going up. This is going down. Watch what happens between the two. See his legs straighten? Look, his legs straighten, and the head's going down. Once again, lots of stress in that back area. This is why you see so much back trouble for anybody trying to learn these, this swing because of that. Now look at him. He's got straight legs here at Impact. That's the way he got this job done. He has straight legs. Why did he straighten his legs? Because he knows that this is, he's trained himself that this is going to this plane at Impact. He's got to get enough room between him and that golf ball. Remember, because he started this club on a too low of a plane, it's too low, it's going to go to the higher plane because of the natural forces on the club. He lifts. Bang, right there onto the higher plane. Don't forget about this right through the middle of his back. Don't forget about the middle of the back, okay? All right, let's take a look at another swing here. Let's look at another very conventional player, Justin Rose. Okay, so here's Justin Rose. I'm going to draw a club shaft plane. Look at that low, very low. I'll do that in yellow. Okay, let's watch him go to impact. Now, this is, this is classic golf instruction these days. Hang the arm straight down below the shoulder. See that? Straight down. Athletic position, bending of the legs. Athletic position. Let's watch him take the club back. Takes the club back. Now he's going to go right down to impact. Let's look at the plane of the club at impact. I'm going to draw a red line on it. Here we go. Look at that. Right up through where? Where's that club shaft going again? Right through the middle of his back. Do not forget about this point because we're going to talk about this middle of the back plane of impact. Remember, impact plane through the middle of the back. All right, so he got the job done. Right to the impact plane, right to the middle of the back. All right, we're going to take a one look at one more swing if I can find it here. And I love looking at this swing. This is Camillo Bajegas. Now, this guy is so athletic, and he's, he's, he's an amazing athlete, all right? He's in great shape, all right? Everybody knows about his fitness. Watch this. Here's his impact. Here's his address plane. Okay, right there. There's his address plane. Now, watch impact. All right, bang. The guy hits the ball a long way, of course, but watch this. Look at that. Look where that's going, right through the middle of his back, right? So he starts on the red line, ends up on that higher plane line, okay? It's always going from lower. Let's go back to his address. It's going from lower plane. To higher plane. Okay, lower plane to higher plane. Right again to the middle of the back. Okay, 
Look what he's had to do here. Let's look at this one more time because I want to keep this, keep hammering this on you guys, how complicated this can be. Remember, this is going down in the downswing. This is going up. So when that occurs, watch this swing now. You got the lower body going up, the upper body going look at See, look at the body go down. His, everything's going down. Now watch his lower body start going up right here. Right there. See it? Right here. Watch the lower body start lifting. Here's the lift. Bang. So you got this going up. This going down, and because of that, why is that? Because this club is going to its naturally plain position to the middle of the back. you got stress right here in the middle of the back. All right, we've seen enough. That's, that's what conventional golf is. Conventional golf is teaching this. This is the way you see that go conventional golf is viewed. What is it? What is going on here? Why is this conventional golf? And the reason is because of this. You have the arms hanging straight down below the shoulders and the club on a plane but that is not where it's going to impact it's going to impact where once again where is it going to impact to this higher plane so let, let me ask you a question here before we go any further see that plane right there where it goes to the middle of the back wouldn't it make sense to start the club where it's going to impact that's what I'm going to pose to you right now. Wouldn't it make sense to start at where it's going to impact? Let's take a look at somebody here, and this is Mo Norman. And that's exactly what I want you to see in his golf swing. Forget about the fact that he's, it looks like he's standing further from the ball. Forget about the fact that he looks different than conventional golfers. Forget about those facts. The only fact you need to know about Mo is this, and I'm going to do this red line right here. I'm going to draw a line from the club shaft, from the club head, right up to the middle of his back. Look, I just drew it through the middle of his back. He is starting the club on the plane, watch, where he impacts. See that? He just impacted exactly on that plane. In other words, he starts the club on the plane where it's going to impact. You know what he didn't have to do? Here's what Mo didn't have to do. Because he created this ideal plane that goes to the middle of his back, he didn't have to do this. No longer is this going up. It's not happening anymore. No longer is this going down. It's not happening anymore. What's happening is that he can stay in position and no longer stress, put stress on the back. That's the key. Now, let's go through this again. He is starting the club at a dress on the same plane that he impacts. That's what we call the single plane position. Why is that easier? Because he's created enough space. He's got enough space between his feet and the ball. He's already got the club on the proper plane and because of this proper spacing, he can start and impact on the same plane. And let me th throw you at another video here that's just genius about Mo Norman. You know how I talked about the spine and the position of it going up and back, check this out. I'm going to draw a line right on Mo's back here, okay? So I just drew kind of a, a line through his lower spine to upper, and watch this. He takes the club back, and his spine stays in position. Look at that. See how his lower spine is still in position as with his upper spine? In other words, he's moving around this position, and he never has to go up and back. He's taking the stress off the back. Now, what's the, why do this? You know, why, why do you want to do this? Because Mo has less movement, you don't see the huge rotations in his body. Look at his trail foot. It's on the ground at impact. Why is his foot on the ground? Why is that? It's because he didn't have to go up. He no longer had to go up with his lower body. He didn't have to do it because he was already on plane. So he never had to do it. He just stayed straight down with his foot. And because of this simplicity, what did it simplify? It simplified the most important part of the golf swing. What is that? Right here. Impact. It simplified the moment that you hit the golf ball because he had less movement. He's on a single plane. The single plane is the answer because he starts and impacts right on the same plane. It simplifies everything with the golf swing. I'm going to go back one more time just so you understand this because I want to hammer this home for you guys so you understand what's going on. Charlie Wee, very conventional golfer, but he's on two planes. Here's what two planes we consider two planes. The arms hang straight down, and because the arms hang down, you get the club on, on a low plane. We call this the, the, 
the low plane here. So you've got a low plane of the golf club. And then when he impacts, he's going to impact on a higher plane. You can see this in red. He impacts on a higher plane. So he's gone from low to high. When you go from low to high, from yellow to red, when you go from low to high, you have to lift one part of your body. You have to lift this part of your body. And this part of the body is coming down. That puts stress right here on the back. That puts stress on that back because you're impacting on this plane. Here's what you need to know about Charlie Wee's swing. He gets to this impact plane we call mid-spine impact. He gets to this mid-spine position. That's a very important point because good players get to this impact position. That's why they hit the ball good. That's why they're good players. That's why they're good ball strikers. But if you want to simplify this, it's right here. It's right here. Start the club. Start the club on that mid-spine plane. Why? Because you're going to end up impacting right there. Start where you impact. Makes a lot of sense if you do that. That's what we're talking about, conventional versus the single-plane golf swing. It's all about simplification. It's all about taking stress off the body. Mo Norman figured this stuff out, and that's why he was the greatest ball striker that's ever played the game.